Welcome to my Central Park experience video. As I mentioned in my New York video, out of the two days that I spent in New York, four to five hours were spent in Central Park. So this is how I spent those hours. Uh, I entered Central Park via Columbus Circle entrance and kept walking towards different trails. Uh, walked towards Sheep Meadow, then went to Strawberry Fields, uh, visited Boo Bridge and then came back to Bethesda Circle, walked towards this lane and then eventually uh, reached Central Park Zoo and uh, finally got out of this exit or the entrance. Let me start with saying Central Park is perhaps one of the best parks in the world. At the Columbus Circle side entrance, you see this beautiful monument welcoming you. The sheer size of the park stuns you at the entrance itself. The park was opened for public in 1858. It has 58 miles of pedestrian walks, 9000 benches and it runs from 58 to 110th street. That's how huge Central Park is. Inside the park, it has 36 bridges. It's normally visited by around 4 million people throughout the year. One of the most surprising part that I saw while entering Central Park was there, are, there were no huge entrances like the one that we see on the Washington Square Park. And that was specifically so that everyone from rich to poor should feel welcome at the Central Park. This was the theme that the designers of the park wanted to imbibe in Central Park itself. I roamed around for a while and eventually reached Sheep Meadow. It's the largest lawn in the Central Park. It's 16 acres wide. It's a very well-known picnic spot for New Yorkers. It was actually a sheep grazing ground till 1930, hence the name Sheep Meadow. It's a designated quiet zone. I had, so, I had heard so much about this place that I wanted to visit it, but it was closed during the winter time. From Sheep Meadow, I kept walking towards Strawberry Field. It is also a designated quiet zone and a garden of peace. It spans across 2.5 acres. It also hosts most famous landmark in Central Park, that's Imagine. It's, it's in the memory of John Lennon from Beatles. It's actually very close to the place where he was murdered in front of his apartment. I was lucky to have someone play his songs near his memorial. From Strawberry Fields, I kept walking through various jogging parks, spent some time at a beautiful lake and reached Bow Bridge. Bow Bridge is one of the most picturesque part of Central Park. There are many scenes from various movies are shot on this bridge. The lake and the high rises in the background create a beautiful scenery. There are many heartfelt messages on the benches of Central Park, like this one, in the memory of Ben Gold, a featherweight champ who ran, walked and pushed baby carriages and finally sat in Central Park from his wife, daughter and grandson. One of the most famous locations through Central Park is Bethesda Terrace and the fountain nearby. The fountain unfortunately wasn't working when I went there. Mostly it was because of the winter. The designs made using 14,000 mint and tiles on ceilings of Bethesda Terrace are a treat to watch. Mint and tiles were made in Europe and are normally used in the huge palaces and churches but this is the place where the ceilings are designed with them.
This pink tree was at its full blossom and looked great giving a contrast to the green surroundings. I roamed around grasping as much beauty of Central Park as I could, sat below this tree for a while and then went and had a hot dog. It was a $3 thing and it wasn't really that great. Central Park is full of such bridges and underpasses. They add beauty and elegance to the greenery and surroundings. Before exiting Central Park, the last thing that I did was visiting Central Park Zoo. I normally avoid going to zoos as I don't like looking at wildlife in cages. But I had read somewhere that this zoo has a snow leopard, hence went in. There are many birds in the Central Park Zoo which are kept by managing their surrounding temperature as per the bird's local climate. I was really surprised to see a Himalayan monal there. The Indian peafowl made its present felt everywhere. There was a big group of scarlet ibis chilling on the top. There are few mammals in the zoo as well. The red panda was a showstopper. It actually looks like a soft toy. Due to their amazing camouflaging ability, snow leopards are very difficult to spot in wild. Hence, you shouldn't miss any chance of looking at them, be it in a zoo. Finally, before exiting zoo, spent some time looking at these penguins and enjoyed activities of these sea lions. Thank you for wandering with me in the Central Park. Please subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Special thanks to my friend Swati for helping me plan this trip.